Good morning, everyone. Yes, we are in, back in the kitchen, but I do have some visitors this morning, so I am very happy to have my little congregation here, and of course, Lucy's here. And uh, it has been quite a stormy weekend so far, but it's very humid and hot, so we brought it into the kitchen. So, uh, if you see me looking over to a direction, that's just because I'm looking at the people that are here and not just at you at home. Um, we have made it to part eight of nine of the Fruits of the Spirit. And um, we started with self-control and now we're up to peace. And of course, next week we will end with love. And... Um, I, I preach a sermon on peace every December during Advent, but I try to do something a little different since this is a different time of the year, and uh, because that's more about, you know, the Prince of Peace and what peace is at Christmas and, and the birth of Christ and all that. So during this peace sermon, I tried to change it up because... Um, it, peace is mentioned 329 times in the Bible. And uh, so I had a lot to choose from. And there's many different paths that you can take with uh, this. So I hope you enjoy this morning. I hope it encourages you to seek peace. And um, because we all deserve peace. And it is something that lives inside of us. And... Um, but we have to be willing to do whatever it takes to get peace. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Because we don't live in a peaceful world. And Satan is determined to steal your peace every single day. So to fight that, there's a lot of scripture that can go along with it. And when you're in a storm of life, the best thing to do, some people's like, I don't really know what to do when I'm going through this or going through that. Whatever the situation you're going through in life, look up on the internet scriptures that go with what you're going through. And trust me, there it's easy to find them. And there's many, many on each and everything. There is nothing we go through in life that there is not scripture to help us with whatever we're going through. And along with those, in that 329 times that peace is talked about in the Bible, 30 alone are in the book of Isaiah. And that's where we're going to start this morning. In Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So we know right off the bat from the time that Jesus was born, he was born to bring us peace because he is crowned the prince of peace and he lived his life as the example of how to live a peaceful life and when we give our hearts back to the lord and become born again and saved all of these fruits of the spirit come and live with us so peace lives within us but we have to accept it and live it and um I mean, the rulers of the time wanted him dead from the moment he was born. And so he lived a turbulent life just like we live each and every day because the devil wants to kill us. The rulers of the time wanted to take Jesus out. Satan wants to take us out. So that is why we must kill negativity, which is an act of, of Satan with positivity so we can live that peaceful life. In John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. And this is Jesus talking. 
My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. So he's telling you when the storms of life comes, yes, they're hard to manage. But if you go to him in prayer and for guidance, he will not leave you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength in every challenge. That is the blueprint. That is everything you need to know about living a peaceful life. I could stop the sermon right here. I won't, but I could. Because that one verse... In John 14, 27, it tells you exactly how to live a peaceful life with Christ. And I didn't grow up in a peaceful home. And uh, I had no idea what this perfect peace that God is talking about until a few years ago when I just said, I've had enough. God, I am laying this down. I am laying it all down. I am giving you everything because I can't take it anymore. And the my parents don't understand what the conflict that was going on daily, how that was affecting me. Everyone is affected by the storms of life very differently. Conflict, it shreds me. Because I don't live that life. I'm here. It's very peaceful. It's Lucy and I and our friends and our little congregation and our neighborhood is very peaceful. And I don't live in that. So when that comes to attack on this side of having peace, you want to eliminate. And sometimes you have to distance yourself from those that take your peace and bring that negativity you have to purge your life, and it is very difficult, but it is so worth it. Now that I live in a peaceful life, I'm not going back. So, um, you have to self-evaluate your own situation and figure out if it's things, habits, people, whatever it is that attack you, thoughts, our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, those all come from either a positive place or a negative place. And when it's coming from negative, that's the devil trying to steal from you. And that is his ultimate goal in life. And um, God wants his children to live a peaceful life. It says it throughout these scriptures. And to stop worrying and allow him to bring that peace and guide you through these things in life. And if it steals your peace and joy, it's too expensive. I heard Joy say that many, many times. And I love that about her. She puts it in practical terms. So when someone or something comes in to disturb that peace, then it's okay to let it go. Because it is too expensive. And in Isaiah 54.10 For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God knows what's coming ahead. We don't. But he does. That's why he is giving us all of these scriptures about peace. Because he knows that we're going to have to lean on him for peace and guidance through these turbulent times. And Jesus never got in a hurry. And we live in a very chaotic world that's hustling and bustling all the time. And for me, living in Southside, it's about to get really hustly bustly in the mornings because school's about to start back. And our traffic situation is something that tests my patience every single day. 
It's been wonderful the past couple of months. School's out and I can get to work in about 20 minutes. Well, in two weeks from now, I'm going to, it's going to take about 45 minutes to get to work. But I have learned getting up early, changing my habits to keep from losing my patience and losing my peace of mind. And so I don't get to work and I am just a frustrated mess to my coworkers and come in in a rant. It's worth me giving up my sleep to get up, get ready, and get on the road before the traffic gets start going. And some mornings that provides me enough time to go sit up on the hill. And those of you that live in Etowah County and know where Convention Hall is, some mornings I have about 10 minutes because I have to leave early to avoid the traffic. So I have a little extra time. Go sit up on that hill, look down at the water, and have just a few minutes of peace and collect my thoughts and talk to God before I go to the office and who knows what's going to happen during the day. <laughs> so, you know, it's chaotic in, in our office sometimes. There again, take deep breaths, connect with God, pray about it so you don't lose your temper and you don't lose your peace. And... Um, we must find time to recharge. We do live in a very chaotic, busy world. And there's things, family, friends, church, work, things that we have no clue about what's going to come up. And everything is coming at you wanting time, wanting your thoughts. You have to take time to recharge yourself. Each day is good. But I know that's hard, especially people that have small children and they're going to school and homework and feeding them and, and all of their activities and all of your activities. But at some point in time, even if it's for five minutes, turn off all the noise. Find time to just breathe and reconnect with God. If it is one scripture you read, just open up your Bible and read a scripture. Take five minutes to just breathe and reconnect and just let your mind calm down and catch up. There is a reason that God says, and he did, work six days and on the seventh, rested. We need that. That's built into us. That is something... If God himself and Christ had to have that, that is very important. We're not bigger and better and, and can handle things more than he can. So if he had to go to the mountain to rest when things got too much, and he took a day of rest every week, that means it is very important for us. And when we get too tired and too stressed and worn too thin, all of these nine fruits of the Spirit go out the window. Because you have no self-control then, so you make bad decisions and, and do things that you shouldn't do. And you have buyer's remorse later if you buy something. You have eater's remorse if you eat something. Or if you lose your temper, then you have that. Your, your peace is gone, your rest is gone, your love is gone, everything is out of balance. So find that time to reconnect with God each and every week, if not each and every day. I highly recommend each and every day. The biblical meaning of, of peace is the restoration of wholeness and completeness and blessings of our new creation. And like I said, when we become Christians and give our heart back to the Lord and are saved, these fruits of the Spirit come and live within us. So there again, we must learn to receive this gift from God and use it. Webster's definition of peace defines peace as freedom or a period of time from public disturbance or war, bringing a quiet, calm state of mind to your mental, emotional, and spiritual inner tr tranquility. And in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it talks about this very thing. So, 
just because the world doesn't like to have biblical meaning anymore, it's still there. In that, that definition, it even talks about spiritual tranquility. So in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious or worried about anything. And I used to be anxious all the time and worried about everything. And it did nothing but make me sick and rob me of my peace and joy. But in every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, always be thanking God. Good, bad, or whatever the situation, be thanking God. Continue to make your specific request known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which assures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding. We may not understand how we can be going through a storm of life and God just wash over us with peace. But just know that that, that is the life and that is how Jesus lived here as our example. And that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. And it also can stand over your mouth. And we all need to work on that. Taming our tongues can not only disturb your peace, but it can steal the peace of others. And you may not mean for it to, but it does. So watch your tongue as much as your thoughts, your actions, and uh, just be thankful to God each and every day for the good and the bad. And we always know that the world's going to be turbulent. So you need to be reminded of Philippians 4, 6 through 7 each and every day. But when we pray for peace and when we ask God to guide us and direct us and, and purge our lives of the negativity and bring that peace, you've got to be willing to do what it takes and give up bad habits, people, and things that disturb your peace. So don't pray for it and don't don't start desiring it if you're not willing to put the work in because it is going to require you to give up some things. So be prepared. You've heard it here first. If you hadn't already heard it, you, you've heard it here today. You will be asked to give up things, habits, people, TV shows, music that you might have listened to. I mean, I can watch something that even if it's something I'm, I'm intrigued by, but it's about murder or it, um, it's about a case or something, you, you know, that's, that gets into your head. So the minute you watch something that's a little deep and a little hard to process, go watch something funny. Counterbalance it. Always. And um, in the book of Matthew, there is a lot that we can learn about peace. And um, Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and we all are in this world today, by religious rituals that provide no peace and will give you an I, God, will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. And in Matthew 5 and uh, 9, Blessed spiritually calm with life joy, life, joy in God's favor are the makers and maintainer of peace, for they will express his character and be called his sons of God. When you live a peaceful life and you're a peacemaker instead of a, uh, so a joy stealer, then <laughs> you will have such favor and such blessings with God. Trust me on this. And it diffuses those that love to steal joy 
Now, maybe they don't set out with that intent in the mornings, but they're such unhappy people with themselves. They are out here to seek to steal your joy. So be the peacemaker. Let God show you favor. And um, be the positive Christ representative. I tell you that all the time with everything. That we are to be the representatives. Well, we can also be the peacemaker representative too. We can walk in peace. And people are asking me that. I'm going through this situation with my mom is in her last days. I'm very at peace with it. And people ask me, oh, you know, and I'm like, I've already prayed about it. I've already put it in God's hands, and I walk in peace. It, it is what it is. It's sad, but life goes on for us that are left behind. And I have a purpose and a calling, and I can't get weighed down in sadness and, and allowing what's going on around me to rock my peace and steal it and keep me from doing what I am sent here to do, my calling and my purpose. We all have a calling. We all have a purpose. Mine is to preach. And if I get depressed, then I am not practicing what I'm preaching. So, yes, it is a turbulent time. But I sleep very peacefully because I know that it's being handled by God I can, I, I'm doing all that I can, and the rest is up to God. And when you get to that point, let me tell you, I promise, I swear on this Bible, when you do that, you will have peace, even in difficult times. In 1 Peter 3.11, get over here to you, a lot of turning today. We must turn away from wickedness and do what is right. And sometimes that is hard because sometimes that is with your family. But you have to walk in obedience to God or else you will never have favor and blessings and peace and joy in your life because you will constantly be battling and tug of war with the negative forces. And... Um, we must search for peace with God, with self and with others, and pursue it eagerly, actively, and not merely desire it. That is what I'm telling you. Everybody wants nice homes and nice cars, and they want all these things, but they're not willing to do the work that the other people have done to get that. Well, it's the same in our spiritual life. Everybody wants peace, love, and joy, but they're not willing to let go of their anger, their bitterness, their hate, their hurts, and all of these things to achieve it. you got to empty out so the Lord can put back in. So empty out the negative things so he can fill them with blessings. And um, when people try to bait you into situations, don't fall victim to that either. And learn how to say no. It is very hard. And we want people to like us. And we want people to include us. But if they truly love you and they truly want you a part of their life, if you say no, and they know that you are saying it not just flippantly like, no, I'm not coming to your party, or no, I'm not going to help you with this, or no, I'm not going to do this or that, just know when they're coming from a good place that it's not because they just need rest maybe or they've got too much they're extended don't take no always as against you but just know that they're at their up to their limit with obligations don't overextend yourself because like i said that will deplete you and you'll start making bad decisions and having a negative attitude 1 Thessalonians 4.11 That is our next one and it is so good. And to make it your ambition to live tranquilly and peacefully. Three years ago, that is where I was at. I was at my breaking point 
with the situation with my mother and I had to pull away for my own good. So I did have ambition to live a tranquil and peaceful life. And I will not let anyone or anything take that from me. Because now that I live that way, I am not willing to give it up. And to mind your own affairs or mind your own business and work with your hands just as we direct you. If we stay in our lane and we stay out of other people's business that we have no business being in, even if they're dragging us into it, say, well, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray over this situation. But do not get into situations. I've gotten myself in my past into messes that I never should have been in. Conflicts with people. It hurt relationships. Stay out of things that are not your business. You can't fix everything. And just because people come to you to fix everything, you can't do it. So you have to pray about it. You have to release it. But some people want you in their storm that they created. And they have to deal with it like you have to deal with what you've created. So mind your business to keep peace in your life. You can't be worried about the peace in other people's lives. Worry about yourself first. And then if you can help others, help others. But some people like the storm. So... Just remember that. And um, I'm going to end on my favorite, which is Jeremiah 29 11. And I have it actually over there on my refrigerator. So when I go to the refrigerator, I see that scripture every single day, many times a day. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future of hope and i want to challenge you this week to self-evaluate your life what is stealing your peace what in your life is not bringing you peace whatever it is pray on it and act on it be ambitious in seeking peace for your life choose peace and pray for it be a peacemaker not a peace stealer and be that Christ example in this world that has very little peace in it let us pray dear Heavenly God we thank you for your word we thank you for your peace that you bring to us thank you for Jesus that he came into this world as our Prince of Peace and our example of how to live a peaceful life. Dear Lord, this week, eliminate all of the negativity and roadblocks in people's lives and people that try to steal their peace. Make us all peacemakers. And dear Lord, we ask that you build a hedge of protection around each and every person that hears this message and their families, that you keep us all happy, healthy, and safe from anything or anyone that could harm us. In Jesus' precious name. Go out this week. Be peacemakers. And until we meet again, God bless you all.